So I have three different functions here. I know they're all called f, but we'll just assume they are different functions. And for each of these, I want to do three things. I want to find the zeros. And so the zeros are the input values that make the value of the function equal to zero. So here would be the t values that make f of t equal to zero. Here would be the x values that make the function equal to zero. So I want to find the zeros. I also want to find the coordinates of the vertex. And finally, I want to find the equation of the line of symmetry. Line of symmetry. And in particular, to make it a little bit more specific, the vertical line of symmetry, which will actually be the only line of symmetry for, for these three. So pause the video and see if you could figure out the zeros, the vertex, and the line of symmetry. And I'm assuming you just did that, and now I'm going to attempt to do it. And if at any point you get inspired, uh, uh, pause the video again and keep on working on it. And the best way to learn this stuff is to, to do it yourself. So let's see. So let's first find the zeros. So, so to find the zeros, we can set t minus 5 squared minus 9 equal to 0. So we could say, t for what t's does t minus 5 squared minus 9 equal 0? Let's see. To solve this, we could add 9 to both sides. And so we could say, if we had 9 to both sides, the left-hand side is just t minus 5 squared. The right-hand side is going to be 9. And so if t minus 5 squared is 9, that means that t minus 5 could be equal to the positive square root of 9, or t minus 5 could equal the negative square root of 9. And to solve for t, we could add 5 to both sides, so we get t is equal to 8, or t is equal to, if we add 5 to both sides here, t is equal to 2. And just like that, we have found the zeros for this function. Because if t is equal to 8 or 2, the function is going to be 0. f of 8 is 0, and f of, and f of 2 is going to be 0. Now let's find the vertex, the coordinates of the vertex. The coordinates of the vertex. So the x-coordinate of the vertex, or sorry, I should say the t-coordinate of the vertex, since the input variable here is t, the t-coordinate of the vertex is going to be halfway in between the zeros. It's going to be halfway in between where the, where the, the parabola, in this case, is going to intersect the x-axis, or the t-axis. I keep saying x-axis. The t-axis for this case. So halfway between 8 and 2, well, it's going to be the average of them, 8 plus 2 over 2. That's 10 over 2, that's 5. So the t coordinate is 5, and 5 is 3 away from 8 and 3 away from 2. And when t is equal to 5, what is f of t, or what is f of 5? Well, when t is equal to 5, 5 minus 5 squared is just 0. And then f of, so f of 5 is just going to be negative 9. And this form of a function, this is actually called vertex form because it's very easy to pick out the vertex. It's very easy to realize, like, okay, look, for this particular one, we're going to hit a minimum point when this part of the expression is equal to zero because this thing at the lowest value it can take on is zero because you're squaring it. It can never take on a negative value. And it takes on zero when t is equal to five. And if that's if this part is zero, then the f of 5 is going to be negative 9. So just like that, we have established the vertex. Now we actually have a lot of information if we wanted to draw it. So if we want to draw this function, and I'll just do a very quick sketch of it. Whoops. So a very quick sketch of it. So that is our t-axis, not our x-axis. I have to keep reminding myself. And that is my. Let's call that my y-axis. And we're going to graph y is equal to f of t. Well, we know the vertex is at the point 5 comma negative 9. So this is t is equal to 5, and y is equal to negative 9. So that's the vertex right over there. And then we know we have zeros at t equals 8 and t equals 2. So t equals 8 and t equals 2. Let me make that a little bit. And t equals 2. Those are the two zeros, so 8 and 2. And so just like that, we can graph f of t. Or we can graph y is equal to f of t. So y is equal to f of t is going to look something like, something like, let me draw it, something like that. That's the graph of y is equal to f of t. Now the last thing that I said is the line of symmetry. Well, the line of symmetry is going to be the vertical line that goes through the vertex. 
So the equation of that line of symmetry is going to be t is equal to five. And it's really just the t coordinate of the vertex that defines the line of symmetry. Let's do the other two right over here. So what are the zeros? Well, if you set this equal to zero, if we say x plus two times x plus four is equal to zero, well that's going to happen if x plus two is equal to zero or x plus four is equal to zero. This is going to happen if we subtract two from both sides when x is negative two, and if we subtract four from both sides or when x is equal to negative four. As we said, the vertex, the x coordinate of the vertex is going to be halfway in between these. So it's going to be negative two plus negative four over two. So that would be negative six over two, which is just negative three, negative three. And when x is negative three, f of x is going to be, let's see, it's going to be negative one times, times one, right? Negative, th negative three plus two is negative one, Neg and so times one. So it's just going to be negative one. There you have it. And the line of symmetry is going to be the vertical line, x is equal to negative three. And once again, we can, we can graph that really fast. So let me, this is my y-axis. See, everything is happening for negative x's, so I'll draw it a little bit more skewed this way. This is my x-axis, and we see that we have zeros at x equals negative two and x is equal to negative four. So negative one, two, three, four. So we have zeros, we have zeros there, Oh, negative two, let me be careful. Negative two and negative four. And the vertex is at negative three comma negative one. So negative three comma negative one. Let me make sure we see that. So this is negative one right over here. Negative one, this is negative two, this is negative four. And so we can sketch out, sketch out what the graph of y is equal to f of x is going to look like. It's going to look something, something like that. That is y is equal to f of x. Let's do one more. Hopefully we're getting the hang of this. So here to solve x squared plus six x plus eight is equal to zero, it will be useful to factor this. And so this can be written as, and if you have trouble doing this, I encourage you to watch videos on factoring polynomials. What adds up to six and when you take their product is eight? Well, four and two. Four plus two is six and four times two is eight. So is equal to zero. And then this is actually the exact same thing as what we have in blue right over here. These are actually the exact same function. They're just written in different forms. And so the solutions are gonna be the exact solutions that we just saw right over here. And the graph is going to be the same thing that we have right over there. So same vertex, same line of symmetry, same zeros. This, these functions were just written in different ways.